many paranormal investigators have checked out the conjuring house however they haven't figured out the type of entities that haunt that location so in this video i'm going to pretty much shed light on the things that are going on in that house and let's see if what i come up with is similar to other mediums that have also taken a peek inside the conjuring house The Conjuring House, a colonial farmhouse built in 1736 with paranormal activity dating back to the 1700s due to the Native American tribes that inhabited that land. Now, in the 1970s, the Perrin family had bought up that house and began living in there until about June 1980 where they moved out and moved to Georgia due to the paranormal activity that was terrorizing them. Because of the events that had transpired in that house, it actually inspired the film The Conjuring. And it's actually a famous case by Ed and Lorraine Warren where they did an investigation to shed light on pretty much the things that were going on. Now, it is said that an evil witch by the name of Bathsheba is the entity that is terrorizing everybody that goes inside that house. But, you know, I'm going to uh, share the things that I have discovered. So I'm going to be reacting to the video called Awakening of the Demon of the Real Conjuring House featuring Matt Rife. September. What a change in Carolyn Parent. She was a slender woman anyway, but she looked like she'd aged at least 10 years. It looked like she hadn't slept or eaten. She was thinner. Her hair was disheveled. She just looked not well. So the reason Mrs. Perrin would look like that is because the entity is draining her. And, you know, a lot of times you will have entities that will pretty much do things such as paranormal activity. They will cause issues among the people living within the house. Pretty much, they will do things to elicit a negative response, which will then yield negative energy for it to feed on. However, there are other ways that negative entities can feed off a person, and it could directly... So when you're in bed and sleeping and whatnot, you can have negative entities and I'm trying to show you with my hand, right? So you're laying on a bed. This is you laying on a bed. A negative entity can come on top of you and drain you of your energy. That's why sometimes when this happens, you can get put into a sleep paralysis. So the thing with sleep paralysis is your consciousness is awake, but your body is pretty much stuck, frozen. It can't move. And the reason this is, is because either the entity is draining you so much that you can't move, or it put you in that state to produce a fear response so then it could drain you. The ultimate goal really is to drain you. But so the entity can lay on top of you, it can lay underneath you, it can lay to the side of you. That's why they say, you know, if you notice activity going on when you're asleep, and or you're having experiences while you're asleep, it's always good to put black tourmaline like in your mattress, like under your mattress, under your pillow. And I'm trying to think, you can also have it like on your nightstands and things to create a barrier. That way, like if you have it under your mattress, the entity can't get you from below. And if you have it under your pillow, 
it's hard for it to get you from above. And then like your nightstands, I have a nightstand on each side of my bed. So I usually have something on each nightstand. So it kind of gives you like this box sort of thing. If you want to go that route, you can. But if you're noticing activity like that, or you feel your bed shifting, and you know you're by yourself and it ain't an animal or a pet or what have you, it's trying to uh, drain your energy from laying with you. And yeah, it, 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 yeah, it's not something you want, really. But essentially, it the entity was feeding off Mrs. Perrin, and that's why she looked zombified and looked 10 years older is because it's literally sucking the life out of her. I began my own thing and I was a Luciferian. What is your definition of Satanism? Right, so let's cut to the chase and call it what it is. Ritual magic, Satanism, and earth religion. It's a religion of the flesh, the mundane, mm -hmm. not of the spirit. It's the opposite of spirit. It's humanism mm -hmm. with uh, black clothes and black handles. <laughs> yeah, I gotta bring them down sometimes. <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> Yeah, I think, it, I think it left its imprint because I'm still interested in that. If some Satanists invited me to their ritual chamber, I wouldn't say no. I would tell myself, I'm investigating. Don't get me Now, his definition of Satanism is pretty spot on. Same with Luciferianism, right? Because that's a branch of Satanism. It's, you know, worshipping Satan and then for him, worshipping Lucifer and using that entity for what have you like so you know it's very ego driven very like he said it's based off of humanistic things and i mean i couldn't describe it better than he could so his definition pretty good and the thing is about what he's saying about like if he was invited to a satanic party or whatever right he would still want to go because when you get into those kinds of practices and listen i'm not coming here from a place of judgment people are going to do what they're going to do do i recommend doing it no so i mean you know it is what it is people are going to do what they're going to do you can't convince them otherwise sometimes the best way for them to not do a certain thing is from them learning the hard way which sucks and i wish that you know people didn't have to learn that way but sometimes that's just what it takes for a person to understand the problem with certain um, practices. But so the thing is, being a Luciferian, he is still tethered to that entity. That's why he's not going to be able to help himself when it comes to those things. He's going to want to get involved. Whether he wants to or not, it's that pull from that tether from that being and the entities that are surrounding that being. Each devil entity has a legion. And so when you worship a devil entity or even some other demons, right? You're not just worshiping one, you're worshiping everything, every entity associated with that entity. And so sometimes you'll get these demonic hauntings and a devil will be involved and it's not just the devil involved that they're worshiping, but they're also having oppression and manifestation and paranormal activity from the Legion as well. And that's why I highly recommend not getting involved in any kind of practices where you are worshiping any demonic entities, any entities of negative or very low vibrations. It's a bad and dangerous game to be playing, okay? And I'm saying this out of experience from helping those who, you know, they were children, got involved because they thought it was the cool thing to do. They thought it was edgy, but now they're learning that it was the worst mistake of their life because now they're experiencing demonic oppression and influence and it's scary, okay? People have killed others and, you know, lives have been lost. It's not something to play around with. Yeah. So when he's saying that he feels like he won't be able to help himself, it's because he's not going to be able to. The grasp is still there. And until he cuts those cords, um, it's still going to linger behind. And it's kind of like a past trauma in a way, because 
it's like that residual energy is still there and the negative entities, even if it's not the same entities, right? So being in the conjuring house, you have a ton of negative entities there and they're going to play on that. They're going to play on the fact that, you know, he was a Luciferian and that he had some dark practices going on. They're going to rub salt into those wounds there. Obviously, he learned his lesson and he's trying to get out of it. But like I said, it's one of those things where you can't just get out of. You have to go through a series of things such as cleansings, um, cleansing yourself, cutting the cords. There's a lot. So I always say think twice before getting involved into any kind of occult or religion or practice that involves working with other negative or demonic entities. So obviously, everyone who follows The Conjuring, the movies, or just like the documentaries, Zach Baggins, you know, all the paranormal investigators, you know that there's multiple entities in that house. And just from watching this video, okay, I was able to get a glimpse of what the one entity looked like. Like, very, very specific details. Now, I don't know if this matches anybody else's descriptions, but I'm going to pretty much explain what I saw. So I see a feminine type figure. Her skin is like a grayish purple hue, if that makes sense. Her hair is very similar in color, slightly darker, but on the for the most part, it's a grayish, purpley, like, light color. Um, her eyes are black. Her outfit is like, it's almost like a dress, but it's like a burlap material, and it's got like that tan, light tan-ish color to it. It's tattered. Now where the her torso is, it's like, it's kind of like ripped there in a way. And it's like, I see a skeletal, like, the bones of a skeleton torso kind of, like, overlaid into that figure, if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, so it's like, from under the ribs to the pelvis area, it's like a skeletal, skeleton, skeletal, I don't know, torso and again, it's fused into that area of the body. Um, she's obviously putting off negative energy. Her aura is really like a darkish gray. It's not quite black, but it's really close to black. Um, she's nasty. She's giving me demonized earthbound spirit though. And the thing is, she can, she can shapeshift. She can shapeshift. So here's the thing about demonized earthbound spirits. Earthbound spirits do not cross over into the light. And depending how long they've been roaming and how um, they've been tarnished, she's been demonized and it's because of the negative energy in that space. It's defiling her and it, hold on, I'm listening to my spirit guides. There's a lot of stuff going on there because you have more than one entity involved. You have some, I see some thought form type energy there. I'm seeing this black, opaque, pushy energy. Right now it's formless, however it does take forms. Okay, it's very fractal-like, so, okay, yeah, thought for me. That has to do with the negative residual energy. Stuff, bad stuff went on there. And it's collecting that negative energy. And that energy is turning into things. And it's like, it's the fractals. The fractals of that energy is combining into this one thing that's allowing it to shape shift based off of the fractals it had consumed or you know, merged into one thing with. I don't know how else to describe it. We know that there's a collection of negative energy and it's turned into a thought form, but 
I strongly believe, I feel very adamant about this, that whether it was the within the Perrin family or people before them, let's just say there was some um, violence, some abuse within the family. You could probably figure out where I'm going with this. And again, I don't know if it's with the parent family or the people before them, but I strongly feel that that happened and that's part of the negative residual energy within that space. Oh, I was getting a headache. That has to do with the negative energy too. I did see three soldiers, male. They're wearing, it's like a tan uniform, but there's some green hues into it. Now I can't tell if it's just because of their aura. I can't tell. They stick around with one another though, I noticed. What keeps going on? And uh, there are other people in here. So at this part, as the guy's talking, I see an overlay of like this white figure. And because it's like um, the frame is just his head and his shoulders to his head, it's like I see the figure merge into his face. And so it looks like a white, a bright white light, but like in a skeletal form overlay on his face. It was very weird. I don't know if anyone else saw it, but I saw it. I don't think you can catch it on the on the video. It was just something I saw with my third eye. So that was weird. That was really friggin weird. Okay, due to the land and the things that went on there, it's creating like this natural, I wanna say natural because it it's from the natives, right? The natives, but not only just the natives, but the other people that lived in that area. It's like a barrier was created that keeps stuff in. It's keeping certain things in. So it's like if a tragedy happens within that space, energy can't really dissipate. I don't know how else to describe it. And that's part of the reason why it's so like concentrated in one space. <sighs> I don't know what created it. I want to say it's possible that like the rituals from Native America. Dude, Mickey went off by himself. I forgot to put Mickey in the view. What the fuck? Here, I'm going to turn my. Put him in frame here. Right behind me. Okay. That's fucking weird. So the only way he goes off is if something's like touching it. I'm not touching it. So he went off by himself. I forgot I turned it on. Okay. So something created the barrier around that area. Um, okay. So I don't know if it was the Native Americans or if it was something that happened naturally, but from what I'm seeing, there's a barrier around the property. It, not even just the property, it goes far beyond the property and it's preventing the spirits within that area to cross over or move on, especially if they initially chose to not cross over initially right and it's creating a concentration of energy right so because the energy can't disperse it's getting very concentrated and it's not allowing it to spread out which is why i'm seeing this dark opaque energy okay and it's very pushy and and that's where the thought form is coming from is because that energy can't leave that area 
and it's creating this thought form. But like I said, there's other entities there. There's the three soldiers that I saw. There could be more. I don't know. I saw three soldiers in their uniforms. I'm seeing that female figure in the burlap dress thing that looks very skeletal in the torso area with the gray hair, grayish purple tinted hair. Same thing with the skin. It's like a gray purple tint, black eyes. I'm getting chills um, and a headache. I'm trying to see. Hold on. I'm like channel. Okay. I'm channeling during the video. Yeah. So some of these energies are be shape shifting and I want to know if there's a demon because I wasn't getting demon vibes, you know, I just kept seeing that black opaque energy, but that is more consolidated energy that turned itself into a thought form. Spirit is telling me that those the, okay, so, you know, the famous picture of the little boy peeping around the corner. So remember how I was talking about the fractals within the negative energy? Because it's a, a an accumulation of all those fractals. And it's going to shape shift into the origins or the things that those energy fractals came from. Well... There were kids in that house and they emitted some of that energy and so it's taking on the shape and the form of those kids. It's so it's like residual energy of the children. My 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 guide's like, "But wait, there's more." <laughs> okay, what else? What else is there? Am I missing something? Like, the negative entity is using the children's image to give a false sense of security. Okay, well, I mean, most people already know that. So, there are two reasons as to why you would see the children. One's the residual, and then, like, the negative energy situation, and then the other one is the negative entity is appearing as that to give a false sense of security. Because if you talk to those children, right, you are building a bridge of communication from you to that entity. And well, if that entity is pretending to be kids and you think it's kids, you're actually building a bridge to that malevolent entity. And when you do that, it forms energy ties. You don't want that. So when I had decided that I was going to make this video on the Conjuring House, like reaction type style, um, that night, you know, when I was trying to go to sleep on the astral realm, I had gotten tackled. I kid you not. An entity on the astral realm broke through my window and tackled me on the bed. And because my consciousness was split, right? My consciousness was split between, you know, trying to go to sleep, but then astral projecting. But my body, my astral body hadn't left my physical body yet. It was about to. And it was like that entity broke through that window to pretty much dive on top of me to stop me from astral projecting and getting information. Mother trucker. So I just wanted to throw that in there too. Also, while I was doing, like, the reaction part, I started feeling a burning sensation right here. Which, there's no mark or anything, so, I mean, you can believe me, don't believe me. Like, why would I bother lying about it? It's wouldn't get me anywhere anyway. But, yeah, so that happened. <laughs> In conclusion, you know, there's that demonized earthbound spirit. You have the thought form and residual energies. You have the three soldiers and you have that barrier thing that's keeping everything in there. I don't feel demon. I don't feel any demons. Um, it is possible for those energies to become demonized. Absolutely. 
but specifically, I don't feel demon. I feel everything there is either earthbound or human created in terms of, you know, the thought form energies and the residual energies and or if Native Americans, you know, when they were, do and I think the Native Americans, when they were trying to protect their land, I think they created a barrier. I'm suspecting that's how it was created. Um, but if they conjured any like spirits or made any spirits to protect them, and especially in times of war, they would, you know, create entities to help them win those wars. It could be along those lines, but again, I don't specifically feel it is a demon. Just that it's some shape or form human created through that energy. And one thing I want to point out too. So while I was trying to get some information last night, I was trying to channel inf information but for whatever reason, information about Colby kept popping up. And I'm just like, why? Like, okay, so I plan to work on a video for him specifically. And it's for his safety. And then when I started watching the videos, I kept getting Colby, 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 Colby. And I'm like, why? Why does he keep coming to mind? And Spirit had a message for him which I'll put in a new video, which either will come after this video or before this video. But the way things are going, it might be before this video. Spirit is very adamant of him knowing ASAP what's going on. So I thought I would also bring that up. Before I do this video for him though, I wanna make sure I have as much information as possible. So I'm probably gonna channel for a few hours just to get as much details as I can. Um, that way, you know, any questions that there are, you know, they can be answered. But yeah, I wanna be able to help as much as I can and give as much information that can help him. So uh, yeah, it's gonna take me a while to get that information, which is why I'm not sure if I'll have this video up before or after. But guys, Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I'm just curious to know what you guys think about it. So anybody else, I'm just curious, like, have you seen any entities? Like, have you seen the same things as I have? Have anybody else, do you know of anybody else that has seen anything similar? Um, yeah, let me know. Anyway, thank you for watching. Peace.